Hello, Curran here. This video is all about customizing axes of a bar chart using D3. If you've used basic D3 axes before and you want to learn how to tweak out your axes to be like really awesome, then this video is for you. The topics we're going to cover here include formatting numbers, removing unnecessary lines, adding a visualization title, adding axis labels, and making tick grid lines. Let's start by formatting numbers. I'm going to start by forking this previous example, making a bar chart from this previous video here. So from here, I'm going to click fork. And then the first thing I'll do is update the title, customizing axes. And then I'll, uh, I'm just going to remove this previous video from the readme here. All right, so here's our index.js. And in here, we're going to make some tweaks to our uh, axes. One problem that we've got right now, or I see it as a problem, is that the formatting for these numbers here is a bit unwieldy. There are a lot of zeros, and it's hard to really read these, and they take up a lot of space. So let's try to use a number formatter to make these small. I think what I'd like to see here is like this is 200 million. So it should be 200M, 400M, or something. It should be nice and concise. D3 has a really nice number formatting module called Format. So we can import Format from D3. And then if you do a Google search for D3 number format, you can see this is the package, but there's actually this example by Zane Armstrong that I find much more useful than the documentation in the package. It shows you some example formats. So the way that you use format from D3 is you call format, which we've imported, and you pass it a special string, which uses this weird language for specifying number formats. Let's take this number here, 800 million. If I copy that and paste it into this example here, you can see how it would be formatted. Oh, but I have to get rid of these commas. Now that we've done that, we can look through this list and see which of these formats is sort of closest to what we desire. And I think in this case, 800M looks good to me. So we can try format of S. To use this format in this bar chart, we can modify our axis. Uh, this is going to be the axis bottom here. And after constructing this axis, we can actually call dot tick format. And we can pass into tick format um, a function that takes as input a number and returns a nice string. And for that, we can say format of the string s. That gets us fairly close. See, we've got 200. 0 0.00m. And I don't want that 0, 0.00 though. But before we move on, this line is starting to feel a bit unwieldy. So what I'm going to do is move this logic out. I'm going to say, all right, g.dependg.call x axis. And then separately, we can define the x axis and say const x axis equals this line here. Now we can comfortably use multiple lines like this. And I think this is more readable. The reason we're getting these zeros at the end is because we haven't specified the precision. In the documentation for D3 format, we can see here that um, here's an example of 42M. And the S is SI prefix. Um, and if you put 0.2, that specifies to use two significant digits. And I think that's what we want, or maybe three. So we can go back to our code, and instead of saying s, we could say 0.3s. Now it looks good to me. 200m, 400m, and so on. For the millions, this is looking good. But as soon as we get to a billion, it says 1.00g. And G, yeah, I mean, I, it is the standard SI prefix for 
I guess, um, billion. But, you know, I would like this to say 1B with a big B instead of G. Because I think that's, you know, pe more people would understand that. This is a bit cryptic. To do this, we can introduce our own custom formatting function. So I'll say const x axis tick format equals a function that takes as input some number and returns, well, we can use this here, format 0.3s, and then pass the number into that. And then in our tick format, we can pass in this variable here. This gets us back to where we were, but it also gets us to a place where we can easily customize this. So I'm going to say, OK, it returns this string, but on this string, we can just call replace dot replace. And we can replace G with B. All right, now that we have more concise labels here, we can actually increase the size of the text, which we couldn't do before. That was limited by these long numbers. So in the styles.css, I can say, all right, for all the text, let's increase the font size and make it like 2EM or even 3EM. All right, this is looking pretty good, but they're going off the screen. and. To address that, we can adjust the margin. So the bottom margin, we can try different values. OK, 30 looks to be pretty good. And for, for the left margin, what about 150? That's not enough. Maybe uh, 200. That looks pretty good. All right, we're done with formatting numbers. Now let's move on to removing unnecessary lines. D3 axes add a bunch of lines. For example, these little tick marks here next to the labels. And, you know, since we already have bars and we have text labels, I don't I really don't think we need these little tick lines over here. So let's get rid of these. To get rid of them, we need to see what's there. So I'm going to inspect the DOM and take a look at these axes. Inside of our SVG, we've got our parent group and then we've got this group element that contains the axis, the y-axis. And in this group element, we have all these ticks and this domain path. Um, this domain path is another extra line, too. You see, it's that one on the end. It's actually on both ends. I think we can safely delete that one, too. So if I just select this path element in the DevTools and then press the Delete key, it just goes away. And that's the kind of thing we want to do in code. And also notice there are group elements for each tick. And if we take a look inside of the group element for one tick, we've got the text, in this case China, and then we've got a line here. And if I select this line in the DevTools and then just hit the delete key, it goes away. See, this is how I'd like all the bars to look. Just nice and simple text label, and a bar. We can do this by using D3 for DOM manipulation after we render the axis. This is the y-axis right here. So we can edit this code here and say, all right, append a group element, call axis left, and this call function returns the selection. So it's it's this selection here. So we can do things like select the DOM elements that we want to remove and then remove them. Let's start by removing the domain path. We can say select and then we can pass in a selector string. And the domain path has a class of domain. So we can use dot domain to select the domain path. And then one, once we've got that selected, we can actually call dot remove. And see, now the domain path has been removed. Next, let's remove these lines for the ticks. We can do that using the same structure that we have. And we could just say, select all, 
so that we can select more than one thing. That's the difference between select and select all, by the way. And these selector strings are powerful enough so that we can say, all right, se select dot domain, but also select the um, ticks. Let's take another look at our DOM elements to see what we can select on. See these group elements? They have a class of tick. So we can select the group element and then select the line within those group elements. To select multiple things with these selector strings, we can separate it with a comma. So we want to select the domain classed things, but also comma dot tick. And if I do that, it just removes the whole tick group, which we don't want to do. So I want to say, all right, within the tick group, we want to just remove the lines. And to signify nesting, we can use space. So we can say dot tick space line. That will remove the lines within the tick groups. All right, it works. Our y-axis is pretty clean at this point. Now let's do something similar for the x-axis. I don't really like that uh, domain line there. So we can use similar logic down here. You know, just paste it right there. But let's keep the tick lines. Let's just remove the domain path like this. And if we're doing that, we can switch this back to just select and that will still work. All right, now that we've removed unnecessary lines, let's add some text titles or text labels so that it's more clear what the visualization is about and what it means. The first of these will just be a title for the overall visualization. What I'd like to do here is just add a title to the top that says something like the most populous 10 countries. To do this, we can just say g.append and we can just append a text element to our parent group element here. Append text and then we can say dot text and then here we can type whatever we want this label to say like for example top 10 most populous countries. And there it is. It has appeared but we can't really see it. Let's adjust the margin. We can adjust the top margin to be, say, 40. All right, that looks fairly decent, but the P is overlapping with the bar. <laughs> we can set the, um, the coordinates of this text. So we can say append text and then set the attribute of Y to be, let's say, I don't know, minus 10. That'll move it up by 10 pixels. All right, that looks pretty good. I'll just go back and adjust the margin once more to say 50. All right. I don't like how it's a, a different font though. See, one thing that D3Axis does is it sets the font to be sans. So we can do that in our CSS. So for the text, we can say the font-family is sans. Or actually, I think the standard thing is sans dash serif. Sans serif. No serifs on the end of these letters. All right, now our font is consistent. And we've got a title. So now when you look at this, you sort of know like, okay, these are the top 10 most populous countries and that was not obvious at all before. We've got our visualization title. Now let's add axis labels. What I'm imagining doing here is adding a similar label for this axis. So down here it should say population. We can take a similar approach and just append a new text element, but this time let's append it to the group element that we already have for the x-axis. This statement here makes it a little bit difficult to get at this group element, so I'm going to extract it to a variable. I'm going to say, all right, x const x axis g, which means x axis group equals this statement here. But this makes a new selection here, so I'm going to 
make this one statement and then we can say it like this x axis g dot select dot domain dot remove and now this fits comfortably on one line now we can take this logic here and apply it to our x axis g so instead of saying g dot append we could say x axis g dot append text and it should show up there I don't know why that's not showing up if I inspect the DOM here I can see that the text element is there but I'm not seeing it and I'm not sure why that is maybe we need to set the fill yeah now it shows up that's strange yeah, that's because D3 axes set the fill to be none on the group element. Hmm. I don't know why it's like that. But anyway, to make that happen in our code, over here we can say .attr of fill to be black. And we don't want this to say top 10 most populous countries. This should say population. And now we just need to make sure that this appears in the right place. I'd like this to appear in the center. So let's start by setting the X coordinate to be in the center. We can say dot ATTR. X is, well, the center would be inner width divided by two. So we can say inner width divided by two right here. And there it is, population, uh, typo. And I would like this to appear on the bottom. So we can use the Y coordinate to move it down. We can say Y is 20, no, 60, maybe 60, but we need to adjust the margin too. I'll adjust the bottom margin to be maybe 50 or maybe 70. All right. Now we can move that label down just a bit more. And there we have it. You could do the same thing for the Y axis if you wanted to, but I feel like this is pretty self-explanatory because these are country names and it says already the top 10 most populous countries. So I'm gonna leave out the axis label for the Y axis. All right, we've added axis labels. Now let's make those tick grid lines. I'm a big fan of this style of tick marks where instead of just being down here, the tick spans all across this vertical space so that you can very easily read where the bar lies in relation to these ticks. We can do this just by tweaking a parameter of the axis, which is, I believe, tick size. So we've already got our x-axis here, and we can add one more call, and we can say dot tick size, and let me just check if this works. If I say five, it's about what it was before, but if I say 10, see how these are now 10 pixels, and if I say 100, they're gonna be like super long. But if I say minus 100, they're gonna go the other way. But how far do we want these ticks to go the other way. I think the answer is inner height. So we could say minus inner height to make them go all the way across. Now you can read this more precisely, especially around this area here. Pakistan has almost exactly 200 million, where Nigeria has a little bit less and Brazil has a little bit more. This is looking fairly decent, but I would like to do one last thing, which is to sort of tweak out the colors of the text here and maybe change the size a little bit to make it, you know, look as good as it possibly can. For advice on colors, I love to consult the Sunlight Foundation Data Visualization Style Guidelines. This is a really nice document that has a lot of good guidelines in general, but one of my favorite sections is this section here on colors. There are suggestions for text colors and also data colors, but for now I'm just gonna 
I'm just going to pick from this selection of grays right here. I'll begin by using this text light color for the ticks and the tick text, meaning these text labels right here, the tick text elements. And we can do this by, in the CSS, we can say, um, well, if we put it here, we can say fill is, and I'm going to paste that color. This will apply to all text, but we don't want this to apply to all text, just the text of the ticks. So instead of saying that on all text, we can say dot tick to select the group elements for the ticks, and then space text to select the text elements inside of each tick. And if we set the fill on that, then you see that these, you know, change color. I don't know, that's a bit too light. I think I'll go for the text main color instead, a little bit darker. There we go. And I don't know, these numbers do seem a bit close together. I think I'll reduce the font size a bit on these tick text elements. And now that we're selecting these, we could be more specific in terms of what we, um, you know, what we apply the size to. So I could say, all right, the text text can be 2.5 em, or maybe 2.7. That looks decent, but now our tick lines seem like really dark in comparison. This guide actually has a color they call line gray accent, which seems like it's <laughs> supposed to be for lines, like our tick lines. So I'm going to use this color for our tick lines. To select the tick lines in CSS, we can say dot tick line. And then in here, to change the color of lines, we need to use stroke. So we can say the stroke of the line is going to be this color here. All right, now this is coming together. We've got nice little background lines and they're, they're more in the background than they were before, but you can still see them. Next, let's style this label here. It looks a bit too uh, black, and I'd like to make it a bit bigger. But how would we select this? I'm not sure. I think we might need to give it a class or something so that we can select it with CSS. Yeah, we're appending that text here. So I think I'm just going to set the class attribute by saying .ettr class is, let's say, axis dash label. I don't know. It could be anything. But now we can select it. So if over in our CSS, we can say, all right, dot axis label. And for this, we can set things like the font size and the fill. So I'm going to copy the logic right there that sets the font size and the fill, and then tweak it to our needs here. So let's set the font size here to, I don't know, 3EM, 3.5. Oh, not 35, 3.5. Maybe even 4. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And because the this text is thicker, I think we could give it a lighter color. Like from here, let's try the text light color on this one. So I can copy that color string and paste it right here. And now this is, see, a little bit lighter. And I think I'll make it a bit bigger, maybe 5 EM. Yeah, that looks pretty good. The last remaining thing is that this text here is it looks really dark now by comparison. So to style this, we need, we should probably give this a class as well. So I'm going to copy that logic that assigns the class. This one here, .attr class is axis label. And we can say, all right, the text that we append could be a class of, uh, I'll call it title. Then in our CSS, we can select the title by saying dot title. And now that we're specifying the font size for, for all of our different types of text, we can remove it from this selector here. 
So I'll make this a bit smaller, maybe four or three, or maybe 3.5. About 3.3, 3.2. And since this is the title, maybe we should use the darker text here. So I'll use the same color that we're using for the tick text, make the title pop out. All right, this is really close. I think I'll just do some final tweaks on the margin because the P is getting cut off there for population. So I'll make the bottom margin a bit bigger, maybe 75. Now we can see that full P. And there's a bit of space over here that we can reclaim by making the left margin maybe 180. There we go. All right, I think that's it. Our bar chart now looks pretty solid, pretty styled, and we've customized the heck out of our axes. All right, that's all for customizing axes of a bar chart with D3. Thanks for watching. Take care.